got the Hans Hankin look on that hairdo on the crew. Hans Hankin, the flight controller on Team USA. Sail GP just got second this morning in Spain. race on Sunday and wind is supposed to be a little windier today and at this point it's not it's a little dicier because the wind is further from the right and so the wind is coming over more land and we're a little closer to the land today Before we left the dock, we talked about jib trim and the brake of the jib breaking evenly when we need power and the jib breaking at the top or luffing at the top first when we don't need power. We talked about the shape of the bottom of the main. You can tell how much bang you have on upwind and downwind by the shape in the bottom of the main. Downwind, you have to have shape in the main, so you have to have the bang ease downwind. Downwind, your boom should rise up a little in heavy air, and it should rise up a little more than that in light air, but it's above parallel to the deck downwind. And that the bottom of the main gets much fuller. What else did we talk about? Jiving, if it's breezy, working on flat jives, keeping the boat planing through jives keeping the speed very high as we get dead downwind into the dead downwind portion of the jive. Full speed right at that moment by keeping the boat flat, not diving in too much and not hiking out too much, being right over the boat. She should probably go ahead and bail out of there. Cool. First race on Sunday. doing good because he's stepping forward as he bends his knees. You want to push the bow down in the water as the boat gets flat. And that helps prevent stern drag. Yep, see how he bends forward and in. Right at the top of the swell he does. Okay, now the turn says, I think we lost a little, we might be lifted a little. Our compass might be, you know, if our compass is reading a lift, we tell the skipper that. Big swell. Look at that. See how he wore off right there? It feels good, but you gotta get off that swell, man. He's putting off towards the mark right now. You gotta stay on the wind. You can't take those swells because you're just getting carried towards the beat. It's a special talent. Anyway, we didn't talk about that. Seems 
like this is a pretty good race. Race one coming to the windward mark and the Munchkins just may have taken the lead. I don't want to call them Munchkins, but <laughs> they're, they're 200 pounds soaking wet. So they've gone from last to first. This feels so good when you're 200 pounds. Okay, so they're not making the mark, so he's really smart. There you go, see? Best skippers in the world now. Bruin. Good, be high on the trap. So the swells, there's enough wind now where you're not gonna feel the swells too much. When you wanna go down, the crew pushes with their front leg, maybe pulls the spinnaker a little as they push with their front leg. So you're actually pushing the bow to leeward. And then as you want to head up, the skipper puts the tiller in the middle and lets the boat, well, you actually probably, you have Lee Helm, so the spinnaker is pulling the bow down so hard that you're ha you actually, to head up, you actually do have to push the tiller to leeward a little. But that's why we want to stay heeled to leeward a tiny bit. We put the center of the sails out to the leeward side of the centerboard and that helps the boat track straighter. That's why we heel slightly. But once you go more than about three, definitely beyond five degrees of heel, the stern drags so much that it, it's, a, it's, a hundred, it's a loss. You can't ever heel a 29 or more, except on tax and jives more than five degrees because the stern enters the water so badly. So when you're looking at like two, three degrees of heel to leeward downwind to help get the center of the sail to leeward of the centerboard, it helps it helps the boat track straighter. That kind of negates the lee helm that you get from the spinnaker. This is just great racing, man. Look at the boys just jived on the inside there. So they just pounced. They put themselves in a good spot to leeward of second and third. And then they bailed out of there a little early and look at them go, number 60. It's good to be 200 pounds. Look at this. This is just crazy. We're going to keep the boat flat through the jibes. See that heel? Flatter. Flatter. Yeah, roll jiving is overrated. That was better. That, that was better. Oop, so that was Kate's fault a little. <laughs> we talked about who's fault kind of jokingly this morning. But if the boat rolls too much on the jives or heels out of the jive, it's the crew's fault. If we flip in heavy air, it's the skipper's fault. <laughs> oh, look at this racing. Gates are a little further apart today because we use the start as a starting line too. Uh, they look headed on port tack, so that makes this left gate likely further upwind. I think they look headed or uh, about even. I think I think the right one just seems further upwind though. Yeah, I think starboard is headed coming in here. Yeah, definitely. Starboard is headed coming in here. So uh right gate there's favored. The wind is from Mexico, over there. Oh yeah, overlap, boat four is inside. See, that's what you do on the right gate. We talked about that yesterday. You come in hard on the right gate from the left and you're overlapped on everybody. 
If you're gonna go into this one, you come in kind of hard on starboard tack, right on ley line. You don't wanna do three jibes inside this area. Yeah, the girl's killing it. Oh, this is just too fun. white caps kicking in just up above us it's probably 12 knots i think these guys were just footing off on the tops of the swells a tiny bit more but we got a heck of a race going here here's the end for usa floor they're like our team leaders man they have given so much to this fleet over their last three years of just giving back and coaching and helping and doing it for free and then you got the disciples over here oliver and wyatt So this is pretty incredible. Wills and uh, Ronan won all four races yesterday. And they are currently in third. The boys are just flying there. See, I got I get down man, dude. Look at that. That's incredible. Like I said, good to be 200 pounds when you have skill. I think Wills is in second. Sorry, sending a lot of videos. This is Kevin and Holland about to win the first race on Sunday. Boys win a 9 to 12 knot race here. There's Oliver and Wyatt getting a third. Kate and Carly. Standing up in the boat at one minute and it looks about nine knots, that's 30 seconds. What a great race that was. This is race two on Sunday. What a beautiful day. We don't get clean cumulus like that very often. We usually get much more humid mixed cumulus so that they get all violent looking. Those things are just beautiful, poofy little cumulus. We're working on acceleration every day. You load the boat up by going down, fill the sails, that heals the boat, and then you womp against that on the track. We got Wyatt Kelly, the Wyatt Kelly jumping in on USA 4. Great skipper and a great crew. So he can skip a regatta and do really well, and he can crew a regatta and do really well. It's really good. Here go the boys again. They were last in the last race, last to first. Outhouse to the penthouse for number 60. Let's see if they can do it again. Let's see if they can do it again. This is how they did it last time. They got to the right, made a gain, and then they went all the way left, made a gain. That means they're fast. Okay, ladies. Oh, one thing we learned last race is when you get out here and chop, 
you can't get in front of the shrouds pretty much because you're going to put the bow underwater so what you do is you raise yourself up higher if you start to have to step way in front of the shrouds and stay there then you go higher on the trap and stand right at the shrouds and sling back from there a little in the big waves and then the skipper can move forward and aft to help too the skipper can move forward when everything's normal and when big waves are coming the skipper can slide out but don't be in front of the shrouds where you're stuck in front of the shrouds because you're gonna put the bow under. This is about 10 knots. Grease two on Here's the biggest deal. Try to see if you can see the difference in twist of the three boat. Looks like the middle boat has the least twist to me. And the other two look very similar. The one on the right has a little more. So that's a main sheet thing mostly. go a little more bang, a little more main sheet and have uh, all of her height. It's a little too much twist. Here's the boys. They're in third now. Yeah. a righty because port tack looks like it's going straight down the pike here. So these guys should just go this way for a little while. There we go. Beautiful. Fighting in here, yeah. So when they were both on port tack, it it was close that Kevin USA 60 had room once Wills jived, but I think Wills entered the three boat length circle while he was on port tack, and there was no overlap. So once he jived, it looked like Kevin had room, but. Again, how far from the mark is exactly three boat lengths? Uh, the other thing that would have to be considered if this were to go to the protest room is, was Kevin overlapped 
10 boat lengths from the mark, eight boat lengths, seven, six, five. If he wasn't overlapped for a while, then he would never win that protest. If he was overlapped 10 boat lengths from the mark and eight boat lengths and seven boat lengths, then all of a sudden Will's claiming that he broke it, then Will would probably lose the protest. So, but I think in that situation, Will's entered the three boat length circle on port tack. Kevin did not have an overlap and then Will's jibed and it looked like Kevin had an overlap. But once you enter the three boat length circle, you're entered. Wow, I think the girls gained here. Oh, that's Wyatt, sorry. So yeah, I think Wyatt gained here. He, he, might, he might be winning. Awesome. Kevin probably should have known he was gonna pinch off Wyatt, so he's pinching him off as soon as he thinks Wyatt's gonna tack. He should have re-accelerated and went a little ways and then tack. But look how conservative he is. He knows he can pass him downwind, so he's just gonna come in here, Wyatt and Oliver. Now, see, that was a good move. He over-tacked. Now he comes back up. That is just remarkable stuff. You over tack so then you don't look like you fouled that guy. That was really close to tacking inside the three boat link circle. Oh yeah, look at Wyatt. Oh god. Pull that sheet and jump, dude. Sorry, trying to drive and video at the same time. Yeah, good escape. So Wills went over here again because it worked so good on the last one. And we'll just see. Oliver and Wyatt right here. I'm about even. Here's the leader. So good job. Oh my god, they killed him. Here. No, oh, maybe not. Look at the land. So I'm even with Wyatt and Oliver right now. And I'm looking at the land behind the blue kite. And I'm losing trees. I don't know, man. It looks like we're way ahead of them. Oh, I see. I'm going too slow. There we go. Now I'm making trees. Yeah, now I'm... Yeah, now I'm making trees. If I was on a collision course, the land just to the right of the blue pipe would hold exactly even. See that? trees again just to the right oh, now I'm open yeah see how the land isn't changing behind the blue kite second Oliver and Wyatt here's uh, Wyatt and Oliver from Dana Point Carly and Kate just got second and third. So the Dana Point guys just got a second and Carly and Kate went from last to third on the last run. <laughs> awesome. Last race. It's pretty early, but that's okay. We're gonna do what we do is we ask the kids to switch positions and then sail home. So they, they become a team and they both become skippers, they both become crews. It's also good, we got 20 seconds. It's also good because if you're telling your skipper what to do during the day, you get to try those things that you were telling them to do and you either it either works or you gain some perspective. So we have some empathy for everything we were each going through as we were doing our job easy to be competitive and be pushing your partner whereas if you steer the boat for a while you might gain a little respect for what they were doing great race there great start that's a big swell so what we're fixing on the girls is less twist in the main less twist in the jib for upwind let's see if we can make that better and then if kate feels like she's having to bend her knees a lot then she can just raise her Noah was coaching them a little between races saying you have too much twist.
used in the main, so they went more bang and they're trying to hold the main sheet more snug. It's just because when the boom goes up one inch, the leech of the jib goes out five and a half inches. It's a it's not a good ratio. You've got to keep the side force on the boat in side force conditions. That's what we're in right now. We have side force conditions. We're not planing or anything. We, we're not twisting the sails off yet. We're, we're trying to keep the the sails pushing the, the, the rig sideways. We have a pretty tight jib and pretty tight main. Jib is just outside the spreader tip. The jib's luffing at the top first just a little. I mean, that's 11, uh, she's not in 11 knots right now. She's in glass right now. But that's a solid 11, 12 coming. So she's in a hole right now. But those sails look way better. Uh, she's at least beating one boat. She might, be, she might be second or first here. Okay, she's coming into big wind. The last time she had big wind, it was a huge right heat. Look at this. Oh, I would have kept going. Oh boy, maybe I would have just kept going. I think she was crossing almost every time. That's okay. We're improving. I think she was crossing the guy. That's okay. I'm just happy. This is some good racing, man. down especially if your boat's behind he didn't he could have done a little more dive down and then come back up but I get sick of people diving down on their spinnaker sets the whole spinnaker collapses by the main you just hairball set you just come around put it on a beam reach pull the thing up grab the sheet grab the trap and go that was just awesome and you especially do that when you have boats close behind you don't do the big dive down hoist when you have boats close behind we've seen it Go back and watch the videos, you'll see people getting rolled after the weather mark because they do the standard bear away thing. Nice. Right when I got over here, the wind died a little bit. They had a really nice buff ripping it. So Wyatt and Oliver have been in the boat about a year, maybe done seven clinics seven weekend clinics in a year. I think this might be their first regatta, maybe their second. The girls have done a few regattas. And uh, they've been, uh, Carly's only been in the boat six months, Skip, Skipper and the crew, been in the 29er many times, Kate. Yeah, Kate's brothers are both national champions. I think Peter's a national champion as a skipper and as a crew. And both Peter and uh, Jack Jocelyn both have won the Hamlin series on more than one occasion. Yeah, we're going. We're going. strong La Playa, Point Loma conditions, Hurricane Golgi kind of, oh boy. 
guys can be coming right out. Figure it out. They need to be hiking in this the whole time. If you're not hiking in these conditions, your sails or your steering aren't quite right. When it's blowing 11, you should be full. I mean, like 80% skipper hike, 100% trap, 95% trap. Yeah. Old wet kite. They didn't want to damage their good one, so all of a sudden they get out here. I say, what's going on? Why don't you have your good kite? They're like, we don't want to mess up our good kite. So they rigged up a <laughs> kind of an old junker. Oh God, they're going to be coming right at me. very unique that's Ronan now skippering and Will's crewing for most of the sail home at least and then we've got Kevin crewing for Holland they switched really important that I think we have a complete team and I think it's really important kids learn that they should be able to do both jobs and the ideal program would be to have Holland skippering a 420 with Kevin crewing and then Kevin skippering the 29er and Holland crewing and then mixing it up once in a while. But what I do, instead of doing that during regattas, what I do is I, I ask kids to switch positions for the, for the sail home. And it's not a race, they're just coming out here practicing in a, in a different position. Oh, one more video. So this is what kids need to do more, is at the end of races, especially if the races end a little early, is they gotta do some free sailing time. Just go and switch it up a little bit, switch skipper and crew position, and just do free sailing time, uncoached. No one telling you what to do, just a nice long hour and a half, whatever sail. And just practice and just get time in the, we call it time in the saddle. way in Sabbath A Fleet. This is where you get good. Sabbath A Fleet 15 knot fly a breeze. <laughs> 